What's good, y'all? Tazi back with another BOP reaction. This video a little different. It's not a music video. It's a uh, from skater to rapper story. I figured y'all probably like this. The core BOP fans. I figured y'all probably um like this type of video. So let's go ahead and get right to it, man. Let's go. BLP Kosher is one of the fastest growing rappers of 2023. Facts. His insane hair is what initially Rightfully. got him attention, with many people comparing him to the Island Boys. I'm an island boy, Hell no, I don't compare him to no damn Island Boys. Many people comparing him to the Island Boys. I'm an island boy, don't ever disrespect BLP like that again. But unlike them, BLP can actually rap. With him having some genius level wordplay and spitting by far the best skateboarding bars that I've ever heard. I remember skating the switch, I bought a switch for old time's sake, ripped off from blowing down on DNA, can't leave a trace. He's flipped off, no who she chained the ball, got him with a vision, coach, that could keep the bear, why is it just a deal? And with him recently working with the likes of Cole Bennett, is she was it? You in a canoe? Yeah. And with him recently working with the likes of Cole Bennett, it is clear to see that he has a bright future ahead of him if he keeps up at this pace. As typically, I, I make videos about nigga, skateboarding. Bro. More important, if you keep. I need to get a verse out of this nigga, bro. For I need to do a song with BOP that be hard. Except fuck. at this pace. As typically, I make videos about skateboarding. More importantly for me, he is also the most successful rapper that has come from the world of skateboarding. Throughout this video, I'll be taking a closer look at his early life and accomplishments in skateboarding, how he started blowing up, what influences his music and style, and then finish off by breaking down some of his best skateboarding bars. So sit back and enjoy the return of my skate story series in the most in-depth mini documentary that I have ever done on the rise of skateboarding's greatest rapper, BLP Kosher. Dreadle man, dreadle man. BLP Kosher, which is an abbreviation <laughs> for his real name, Benjamin Landy Pavlon, was bro, born was in Deerfield, school, Broward County, Florida. Growing up in the same area as Kodak Black, XXS Tentacion, and Ski Mask the Slump God. From the young age of seven- Broward had a lot of, um, W artists, bro. Black, XXS Tentacion, and Ski Mask the Slump God. Rest in peace, From the X. young age of seven, BLP, who at the time was called Benny by his friends, would take up skateboarding as a hobby and completely fell in love with it. He lived with his mom and grandma at the Pine Tree Apartments, which I guess doubles as a senior living home, which made him spend his entire childhood going outside, with him stating that he basically grew up at the skate park. I like it outside. You, you always constantly gotta be doing something. Yeah, because I grew up at the skate park. I was living with my grandma and my mom at the, at this like senior living place. I had to be I out before 7 a.m. and I couldn't come back until after 12. I like being out anyway. I don't even like spending time in the crib. I've heard some people online say that he it's comes dope. from a privileged background, but I don't really believe that is the case. I mean, just look at the reviews and the photos of those apartments. Sure, they have a pool, Damn. but it does not exactly seem like a life of luxury. After some Nardward CIA level investigation, I managed to find some of, if not the first ever videos of BLP kosher skateboarding that was uploaded online. The earliest of which dates back to December 2011, when BLP Kosher was probably around 10 or 11 years old. It is simply called Benny Sponsor Me Video. I'm confident it's really him because Boca Skate Park is literally 5 miles away from the apartments that he lived at, and he also mentions going to Boca frequently in an interview. There's so many cities in Broward, but like, Boca is like borderline right next to me and I live there a lot too and stuff. There are also some more videos I found of him from 2013 of him skating at a drop in skate park, which is also just Damn, down the road from where he lives. His first actual edited skateboarding fun. video, aside from the sponsor me video, was filmed at drop in skate park, simply called Benny Pavlon at drop in. He would probably be around 12 to 13 years old in this video, and he is without a doubt a great skater. More impressively, even at such a young age, he is absolutely killing it with the switch tricks which I'll get into more detail a little bit later. A year or so after this video released, BLP Kosher would drop out of Deerfield High School on literally the first day, saying that he felt <laughs> trapped. The school that we was at, Deerfield High, I went there for like a day. Really? And, nah, I went there for like a couple hours, like a couple <laughs> periods. What made you drop out? I felt like I was like trapped. I already did three years of middle school, so I was like, I can't Facts, bro, I hated did school. Oh my God, bro, I hated school yeah. growing up. What do you do after you drop Damn. out? What's your next step? I filmed like a whole bunch of skate video parts. And skate he did, quickly going flow for a local skate shop called Mad Skate Shop. Skateboarding became less of a hobby and more of a lifestyle for BLP, as he started taking it more seriously by ditching the skate parks and hitting the streets so he could start putting together his own skateboarding parts. 
The earliest I could find was uploaded in 2017 called BLP. Hey, if there's any skaters watching this, who should I start watching to uh, take notes of, of, of skaters, man? More seriously, by ditching the skate parks and hitting the streets so he could start putting together his own skateboarding parts. The earliest I could find was uploaded in 2017 called BLP Raw Street Park. This was also when he started going by the name of BLP by using BLP Skate as his Instagram handle. 2017 to 2018 seemed to mark a significant moment in BLP's skateboarding career as most of the clips that I've Bro, found are cold with his it too. timeline. It was also around this time that he My started God, getting talented. some more serious sponsors, most notably with him going flow for Habitat Skateboards and Health Footwear. For those unaware, Flow is the first entry level sponsorship that you can get. Basically, he just got free stuff. The next level up from that would be AM, where you typically start getting paid and become part of the core team. And the level up from that would be Pro, where you have your own name on a board and get paid royalties plus a salary to skateboard for the team. Towards the end of 2017, he released one of his most notable parts, 10 Toes Down. While it might not look like anything crazy, and by no means does it compare to any iconic skateboarding parts, still he is doing quite a lot of impressive tricks, most notably in Switch. Which for those of you that don't skate, it's pretty What is that? What is a skateboarding part? Is that like a trick? Um, I'm not uh, hip to the skating. Compared to any iconic um, skateboarding lingo. parts, still he is doing quite a lot of impressive tricks most notably in switch which for those of you that don't skate it's pretty much the equivalent of riding with the opposite hand because for switch tricks mm. your foot position is reversed making those tricks much harder to execute and land this shows a great amount of skill and dedication to skateboarding in fact about half the tricks in this part are done switch in 2018 he carried this momentum with another video part called mad minute Once again, continuing the bro, when I did try skating, the hardest thing was, bro, how do, how do you keep the board on your foot in the air, bro? The board stay on the ground. The board does not come off the ground, bro. Video part called Mad Minute. I don't know why that jump's so hard to do, bro. Once again, continuing the trend of many hard. switch tricks. The next part that I could find was in 2019 called Egrets. At this point, his skating was starting to get really good, Ooh. and it's with that was smooth. At this point, his skating was starting to get really good, and it's without a doubt that he could have started getting paid to skateboard by going am for one of his sponsors, and that was his plan to do so. He stated, "Like, talk a little bit about like your journey in skateboarding. Did you ever like want to go pro?" Oh, well, I thought that was going to be my career. To mm -hmm. be real honest with you, I had like a little skate shop sponsor um, through Flow and stuff. It was just like a hustle, like, you know what I mean? Just like going in the streets with my, with my with the camera, like ask my friend to film it, go home, like pay my dog to edit. He continued skating hard, and in May 2020, he released his best part to date, Exit 42. Exit 42, Jew. Watching this part, you would think that he rides goofy with how many tricks Damn. that he does switch. And for those of you non-skaters, no, that's not a diss. Goofy is when you ride with your right foot forward. A regular is when you ride with your left foot forward, which is BLP's natural stance. Y'all yeah, need to get into skating, man. The ender in this video is perhaps the most impressive trick of the whole part, which was good enough to get him a mention in a recent episode of Skate Line. Then he got street cred. He did a switch back tail flip out. That's the only street cred we care about. We don't got shoot nobody riding nothing. You got real switch tricks. You good in the streets. Later that same year, BLP Kosher would release his first song ever as a joke called Sweet Potato. Me and LeGarry would joke around like that. January 2021. I might have to react to that. <laughs> we put that bit on SoundCloud. It was like a joke. Like, I didn't really take it seriously. I wasn't really trying to rap, to be honest with you. Despite this song being entirely a joke, it really does have a bit of the same wordplay as the Acid Day, most notably with his skateboarding references. I'm doing switch front crooks like I'm Jimmy Ford. Oh. Cracker talk and shit, but he still do board slides on rails. And he also included a few references to Judaism. About now is what like should probably address the elephant in the room. Those damn wicks, man. 
No, he is not in any way related to the Allen boys. Bro, Allen boys. I guess bro, that is no. just what people do with their hair in Florida. But the origin story of BLP's wicks go a little bit deeper than just the hairstyle. Shout out my boy Charmaine. He gave me my look. He gave me the Rest in peace, Charmaine. He got killed by the police. When that happened, I was like so fierce. I was like, I ain't never finna cut these off. I had like just like my little two, you know, just regular payers. His girlfriend had passed away. I gave him like the tefillin prayer and helped him do like the cottage for her soul to elevate. Like he was like, I'm gonna wake, I'm gonna make your little payers wake, wake him up. Anyway, he dropped sweet potatoes a joke and didn't think much of it. It was just something fun for him to do and he continued focusing on skateboarding. Then he met another rapper called Jew Shiesty, who was older and a bit more connected to the music industry in Florida. He inspired BLP to keep going and he also helped create BLP's name. As before, he was thinking about going by the name LaKosher, but Shaisi told him to keep the BLP from his skateboarding days. Thus the name the BLP Bijou? Kosher was born. And while it may seem like he just came out of nowhere and blew up, his success was not overnight. All throughout 2021, BLP was on the grind putting out music going as far as handing out physical flyers to people just so they'll listen to his music. At first, he was mostly getting attention for his hairstyle. For the most part, this brought more negativity and haters than actual fans. True people was continued, hating. the people heard more of his music, and they started to like him more. In fact, he attributes part of his success to the haters, as they would boost the algorithm on his Instagram by arguing in the comments. I love the haters too, because sometimes they be helping out. I got 700 comments instead of 300, because I had more hate than love when I first started. Like, they helped you shake my head. Yeah, like, the boys snapped for me, so. At this point, BLP was still somewhat of an underground artist, but he started to pick up a lot of traction through Instagram when Cray Sean reposted their freestyle they did in his car. <laughs> I react to this song. A few months later, in November, he released his first album called BLP Kosher and the Magic the w album. This undeniably marked a shift in his career, with multiple songs becoming hits, starting with The Knack, when Drewski put it on Coulda Been Records. Even though it was just mostly a joke because of the hair, the song was actually fire and it got BLP a lot of new fans. Because of this, the rest of his album was getting promoted, with Jew on the Canoe becoming the biggest hit of the album, setting off 1.7 million views on YouTube currently. Because of this, he also blew up on TikTok <laughs> with people making fun of him in the same manner that they did to the Island Boys, but this time he actually made good music, so they stuck around. All of this new traction got a lot of new eyes on BLP, which led up to the biggest breakout moment for him and something that many other rappers can only dream of doing. And that is Shut working up, Cole. with Cole Bennett on a Lyrical Lemonade music video. Lyrical Lemonade represents a sort of seal of authenticity out, that can create entire careers for rappers. This song if was it wasn't hard for too. Lyrical Lemonade, a lot of the greatest rappers of the past five years Rest would probably not legend. exist or be anywhere as relevant as they became. The one thing that BLP had from early in his career and that has only improved even more now is his wordplay and double entendres. Facts. A frequently sneaking in skateboarding Nigga, and Jewish references. To cover all of them would require me to cover pretty much every single song, but I'll break down just a few of my favorites real quick. Here BLP makes a clever use of the word switch. The first meaning to this is in reference to his long history of skateboarding. Skating switch refers to riding with the opposite foot backwards as I covered earlier. The second meaning of the word switch is in reference to a Glock switch, a device which converts a semi-automatic pistol into one capable of fully automatic fire. The grip thumb is what happens when you get some fresh grip tape and it rips up the skin on your thumb. Therefore, it rips off his DNA from his thumb, or more specifically his fingerprint, so he Ball. cannot leave a trace. Ball, Yoshi Tannenbaum is a professional skateboarder who is well known for his ability to laser flip. Kosher makes a pun on a laser flip, saying that his Glock came with a laser. Jason Dill. A kosher pickle is a type of pickle that is prepared in ordinance with Jewish dietary laws. Kosher pickles are typically fermented in barrels. This is also a double entendre for the barrel of a gun, which Kosher says that he keeps on him while he's skating. Jason Dill refers to an American pro skateboarder and founder of yeah, F.A. Dill, pickle, Jason Dill, Dill is Dill, also barrel. a spice commonly used to season kosher pickles. I don't know how he managed to have a Jewish reference in the same sentence as a skateboarding reference, but it is truly a testament to the complexity and range of his thought process. While these lyrics might make it seem like BLP Kosher is into some very non-kosher activities, I don't believe that is actually the case as that would go against everything he stands for. 
I'm sure that he does practice the Second Amendment as every American should, but I do not believe that he is sliding on any ops. Simply put, he is just making music that is catchy and people choose to listen to, while incorporating his own style into what's popular right now. The bigger issue is why people choose to listen to music that promotes violence in the first place, but BL people to spin on it that is lighthearted and more importantly, socially conscious. His goal, it seems, is not to glorify his actions, but rather start a dialogue about them and their place in our society. Or, more realistically, he is just having fun with his creativity, expressing his own perspectives, and connecting with an audience that appreciates his unique blend of humor, social commentary, and catchy flows. Despite Thanks. the seeming incongruence of his lyrics and his lifestyle, Kosher stays true to his beliefs, crafting a musical persona that changes norms and invites reflection, all while keeping his listeners entertained and engaged. It's a delicate balance, but one that he manages with skill and finesse. Just a few weeks ago, BLP Kosher had his first concert where he played some unreleased songs. Frank A. It's intriguing what to see where the again? future will take him, as it really does seem like if he keeps growing at this pace, he will become one of the biggest rappers in 2023. But ultimately, only time will tell. And that is the story of BLP Kosher as we know it so far. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and consider checking out my skate story. Dreadle man, dreadle man. Yeah, this video was dope. I need to get into skating, man. Um, I used to always play the skate games and stuff when I was younger, but I don't really remember a lot from them for the fact that I was young as hell. I was very young. But, um, yeah, this video was dope and very uh, informative. If that is that a word, I, I think it. I don't know, man. It's Huzzy, man. Keep it a hundred. Yeah. Keep it a hundred. Keep it. I'm saying. Take five, not take ten. Shot fifteen, niggas ready to spin. Shot clock count down five times fast. These niggas ain't ready to win. Yeah. Got a hot top, a hot noggin. That's just a hot spot for a nigga to bench. That ain't your man's talking. That's a Hennessy. That's a Jack Daniels. That's a Jam.